I'm excited to be able to welcome on one of the top prospects of 2022. Guys, been really busy since the opening periods opened up with college coaches Colin and Julian Phillips. Go on, day, bro. What's up, man? Nothing much today. How about yourself? Pretty good, man. Well, I mean, first of all, let's just get into it. I mean, it's now been a couple of days since the live periods opened up for you guys. Coaches calling you. I know you've been busy. Take us through the last couple of days. Uh, it's been real busy, you know. As soon as 12 o'clock hit, a whole bunch of colleges calling me. Probably like 30 some. You know, I got some offers, which was good. It's just been pretty busy, you know, just answering phone calls and stuff. And as you said, I mean, I think a lot of guys are getting calls right at the dot. Who was the first school to call you? Uh, the first school to call me was Clemson around like 11, 50 something. Then like Texas Tech called me exactly at 12. Then it just kept going from there. Did you get any sleep that night? Yeah, I did. I went to sleep real late, though, real late. Mm -hmm. I mean, so far, I think in the past couple of days, I mean, you picked up KU, Missouri, ASU, Florida, LSU, Texas Tech, I mean, the list goes on. Having all these yeah. now where pretty much you're going to be able to choose what school you want to attend, what's that feel like? Uh, it feels good. You know, it's like what I've been dreaming for since I was a kid. It's like real testament to my hard work. So, you know, I just thank God for it. And to a degree, I mean, you're still an underrated player. I mean, rankings are starting to get you up there, top 100 prospects, almost all things. But, I mean, overall, your social media is not there all the way. You're kind of underrated. You're still getting known by people. What, for people that don't know you necessarily, what what can they know about you? What's the thing that you kind of do on the court? Uh, I feel like I can do a little bit of everything. Like, I'm a very versatile player. You know, I can play both inside and out. You know, I can shoot a little bit. Good passer, shot blocker, rebounder, you know. Just things like that. And clearly, I mean, having the schools just already offered you, they view you as a guy that will be one of the faces of the recruiting class. So, I mean, it's pretty much going to be how you're going to kind of go in there with looking for the school. How are you going to decide what's the best option for you when that time does come? Uh, just, you know, going to the school and listen to the, to the coaches and see what they have to say. Then, you know, ultimately I'll sit back down with my family and friends, you know, and talk with them and then see where their head's at. Then I'll go in my room and make my decision myself. Absolutely. And you got a long way away from that period. And I'm sure a lot more schools are going to come into play. Some might not, some might leave, but some big appeals to some guys, a guy like you will have opportunity most likely to pursue potentially an NBA, straight to the NBA path out of high school, or at least the G League route. Are those something that you might be considering? Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, if that option is available to me, you know, and that might be my best interest to do, I'll definitely look towards that. And another thing in terms of, Possibly whatever decision you go is teaming up with someone, playing with your friends or something. Is there something you've talked to you about potentially you want to play with at the college level or at the overseer pro level? Uh, no, nah, not really. You know, I have a couple guys in my AAU team. You know, we talked about possibly playing in college. But, you know, well, you know if that happens, you know, that would be great. But if not, you know, I can't really sweat it too much. No doubt. And, I mean, throughout this time, you've started pulling more and more offers. But let's go back to your very first one. When that first offer came in, take us to that day. What was it like? Uh, I think it was October 18th, and this was ninth grade during one of our basketball classes in school. And Iowa State's assistant coach, Kane James, had came because uh, one of the players on our team was, was going to commit to Iowa State, which was Trey Jackson. So coach had came in there during our basketball class. We were scrimmaging back and forth, up and down. And, you know, I was doing real good and after that. After the bell had rang, he uh, said he wanted to talk to me. He said he liked my game a lot. And, you know, he just gave me an offer. And then, you know, it was just a good day from then on. You know, I was real happy. And I posted it on later on that night. And my Twitter kind of went crazy on that one, too. And so I'm sure you get home or maybe you call your parents or something. I mean, what was the first person you ever tell? What was their reaction? Uh, I think the first person I actually told was my friend Emmanuel, one of my close friends, you know. I always tell him stuff. You know, he was real happy for me. You know, that's one of my good guys right there. That's awesome. And as the offers keep piling in, how have you kind of got accustomed to just knowing that all these coaches want you? Uh, you know, I just I just thank God, really, you know, because I know, like, I want to go into the next level and play for, you know, whoever, whichever be my best decision. And, you know, I just listen to what they got to say and then, and I'll just make my decision later on in a couple of years because it's still early now, of course. No doubt. And when that decision does come, I mean, what kind of factors are going to play into that decision? I mean, is staying close to home something you're looking at? Is the play style maybe the biggest thing? What's some of the, like, maybe the biggest factor is for you? 
Uh, the biggest factor is probably play style, you know, what fits me. Definitely, like, my freshman year, will I play at that school or will I have to sit the bench, you know, and learn? That definitely would be a factor. You know, uh, I don't mind leaving away from home, but staying home could be also an option. You know, those are a couple of them. And when you talk about play style, what is your preferable play style? What's the system that you think would fit you best? Uh, I think that'll fit me best that I've been playing, like, since I've been growing up a lot, probably playing fast. You know, my high school coach really lives on playing fast and transition. You know, like I said, I was versatile. So, you know, we can either go five out with me or four in, four out, one in. So I'll be used to that. Then on defense, you know, we play a lot of man-to-man in high school. So if a college plays man-to-man, you know, full court, that won't really be a problem for me because I'll already be used to it. And for some guys, you look at the schools you have, some like KU Blue Blood, you have a lot of schools that's rising up, big-time powerhouse colleges like an ASU rising up, like Florida. Will having the appeal of maybe it being a Blue Blood, being a big score, maybe if it's a mid-major, have any impact on your decision? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that, you know. I feel like anybody can, you can get to the league anywhere, you know, really any college, you know, if you're good, you'll be seen, you know, and they'll want you if you're good. So really being a blue blood or, you know, just being like a regular or even mid-major, as you said, really won't play a factor in that. Absolutely. And let's talk about your high school season. I mean, that's why you really broke out this year, especially having a big time year this past year. What has it been like taking us through the year? Uh, it was good, you know. Uh, I think my freshman year I played, I averaged probably like 11 some points. Then, you know, my next year came, I think I averaged 20 and 10 or 11, one of those two, which was real good for me. Uh, you know, I tried to stay consistent through most of every game we played. Of course, I had a couple bad games, you know, can't really prevent those from happening. Uh, you know, just working hard on my team because, you know, we had a very young team. I think we had like seven or eight kids in 10th grade on our team. So all of us really knew each other and we really played well together because, you know, we're all around the same age. It's, you know, some of us play on the same AAU team or, you know, we always see each other in class. So we already had that connection there. And being in South Carolina, it's a state that's rising up. A lot more talent starting to go out there, including a big school like Dorman, obviously. You guys played in the playoffs. Seeing the kind of talent start to come out of there, what does that mean to you in terms of you now being able to become the next big player out there? Uh, you know, it means a lot to be, like, the next big thing from, like, where you're from, or, like, where you started started from, you know, because, like, when I was younger, like you said, I was I really wasn't, like, ranked – I wasn't ranked high when I was younger or anything like that. So, as I got older, you know, more stuff started to come. You know, and it means a lot. It's like a testament to your hard work, and it shows that people are really looking at you. So, it feels good. And for you now, you head into your two last seasons of high school basketball junior senior season. Personal accolades, what are those going to be for you? Uh, my main focus right now is to be a state champion, you know, bring the first state championship to Blackwood. You know, that's my main focus. I feel like that's all my teammates focus too. Absolutely. And so you guys always came off about a 17-11 record this year. Lost to Dorman, which was one of the top teams, would have been a Geico team this past year. What's With them out of the picture now, who do you say is going to be the team that possibly go out there and win the state championship? Uh, I feel like we have a great chance of winning this year, but you can't really count anybody out, you know. They can play their best game against us, or we can play our worst game against them. You know, we just got to be ready for every every fight that we got to put up each night. And going back to the dormant theme, and we know a couple of the big time players out there moving on to college now. Got like PJ, got like Miles. And so that's going to kind of leave it open for who's going to become the next star. And for you, what's some of the stuff you've maybe seen how they led last year, last couple of seasons? They're going to kind of take and learn from them now as you kind of become the face of South Carolina. Uh, yeah, you know, just learn to work hard, you know. Don't let, don't ever let anybody outwork you, you know. You got to stay in the gym, put in those hours, you know, and it'll all pay off in the long run. Couldn't agree more, man. And for you next year, your numbers obviously were solid this year, breakout year. What's kind of the goal for you next year? What's the kind of the average numbers that you want to put up for next season? Uh, you know, just average more than I did last year, of course. You know, more points, more rebounds. I want to focus on getting, like, my averages in all-around categories up more, too, like assists, steals, blocks, stuff like that. On top of your ball coach, how have you guys grown over the past few seasons? Uh, I feel – Coach Washington, you know, he's a great coach. I feel like he's the best coach in South Carolina. You know, he always keeps it real with you. You know, he's a real tough coach. But he's been coaching for – like 30 plus years. So, you know, you got to listen to him because he knows what he's talking about. And he always has your best interest. You know, even there are my assistant coaches there too. They all follow with Coach Washington. They've been with him for years. You know, they know what they're talking about too. And they give their hardest at practice, just like how we do. 
And speaking about coaches, I mean, going back to the college coaches you've been talking to now, when you talk to them, I mean, what's the kind of player that they see turning into or the kind of player a lot of programs want you to be if you go to that program? Uh, I, most of them have been saying, you know, they just want me to play play my game, you know. They know that I'm versatile. They know I can play both in and out. They feel like I can work well with what they run, and they just want me to be out there and play for them and get them that national championship. And you personally, then, is there a guy you kind of model the game after, a few guys maybe you take pieces from? Uh, of course, when I watch the, like, NBA, you know, I try to look at all the best players, you know, and take a couple of pieces from them. You know, my favorite player is Kevin Durant. I feel like, you know, he's one of the greatest players of all time. Mm -hmm. I do feel like Michael Jordan, though, is the greatest player of all time. But, you know, I watch a lot of, like, old school basketball. And I have a couple of coaches that send me clips of, like, you know, Brandon Ingram and stuff like that that I could possibly model my game after. And if you go to a college program, I mean, you obviously have a couple more years, as we said. But if you're going to the season, what would you bring to a team? What personally would you say you think you can go excel at and your go-to thing for a team next year? Uh, for a team, I feel like I could just be that one hardworking guy, you know, that always will listen, you know, that won't quit on the team, even if we're down or anything like that. Just bring a positive attitude in and out each night. No doubt, man. And my last thing before I let you go is you personally, both on and off the court, by the time you step away from the game of basketball, what do you want that legacy to be? What do you want to remember for? Uh, well, you know, when it's all said and done, I want to be remembered as a player who, you know, didn't quit who always gave 110% each and every night. Because, you know, you never know when your last game is. So each and every time you step out, you know, you can't take it for granted. You just got to go hard and try to get the win. That's what I want to be known for. For sure, man. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking time to come on, my guy. And here we we'll see what God's got in store for you the next couple of years. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me. Of course, man. Y'all welcome on, man. God bless. God bless you, too.